Bonanza, OGA. My name is Peter Thomas, and I'm Swampy Cree from the Pemichicamac Cree Nation, which is near, actually, in Cross Lake. So today, what we're going to be working on is one of these. In the future videos, we're going to show you how to make the stencils, how to spray paint, spray paint techniques. So this is going to be some of the tools that you're going to need. You have a scrap piece of paper, pencil, a hand stock, a miter box. This is to help you cut um, straight lines. Some clamps, not necessary, but if you don't have an extra hand to help you, that, that also helps. Pliers, you need some type of wire. Some of these, these are called screw eyes, and they're basically just screws with little loops at the end of it. A brush, it doesn't have to be a brush this big. It can be a brush of any size. You need a measuring tape. If you don't have a measuring tape, it also works as just a general ruler. Now we're gonna be using two by twos today. That's what this is. This is just a shorter length, so I can show you on camera. I do have some eight foot two by twos. Some gesso, you don't need to use gesso. This is to prime the canvas. You can use general house paint. It's just to seal the canvas. You'll need some wood glue. You can use normal white glue, that craft glue that you have at home. You'll need some canvas. You could also use like a drop sheet canvas as well. For this one, you'll also need a staple gun. And last but not least, you need some safety glasses, as long as you have something to protect your eyes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw out a plan. 12 inches, 16 inches. With the two by two, you wanna keep in mind of the length of everything. The sides, the two by two isn't gonna be a full 12 inches. We have to minus the width of this two by two. This is one, one and a half inches and this is also one and a half inches. So when you measure this 12 inch side, you have to minus the one and a half and the one and a half, which is three inches. So 12 minus three, so this has to be nine inches as well as this piece, and that'll give you a total of 12 inches. We can go ahead and start checking out the wood. So when you're choosing your piece of wood, you always want to give it a check. You always want to look down the wood and look for bows and curves. You want to try to choose one that's not so curved. One example is this one right here. It's kind of bent like a hockey stick you don't want. For these types of pieces of wood, you, want, you might want to use for short, smaller pieces. One other thing you want to look for is knots and kind of like pieces like this. So this here is what's called a miter box. And what it has is these grooves in here that you can cut different angles. Um, it also helps to keep the piece of wood steady and also that you can keep cut straight down. If you don't have one of these, uh, I'll show you another way of how we can cut a straight angle. I'm just gonna fold this so that the paper's a little bit more rigid. Line up the edge of the two by four with the paper and I can trace this line right here. And do the same thing on this side. It's better to do it on both sides. And there I have a direct 90 degree cut. So if I wanna cut this, I'm gonna follow this line, but I'm also gonna follow this line. Most uh, hardware stores would have something like this. And the miter box is basically to guide you to make this, this square cut. Now on my miter box, it came with these pegs, which is basically to help tighten it up and hold the piece of wood in place. So now I'm gonna clamp down the miter box. One thing you wanna think about is which way your piece of wood is gonna sit. So I'm gonna have it sitting on this side. And this clamp will be used to hold down a piece of wood once I have it on. So now that I have my piece of wood, I'm gonna double check my plan, get my measuring tape, 16. So when you place your piece of wood in the miter box, you wanna keep it flat against the wall and also flat on the bottom. So now that I have this lined up, I'm looking at the groove here and it's lined up perfect. Things to think about when you're using your saw is what's on the other side. You know, if there is a tape there, where you place your hand, you wanna keep it at least four to five inches away. Uh, another thing to think about is that when you're cutting, you want your saw to be flat. If you cut at an angle like this, what's gonna happen is you'll end up damaging your table as well as the miter box. You might wanna wear a mask with hand tools. It's not so bad, it's creating dust. So now that I have my first 16 inch piece here, what I'm gonna do is mark it. So one of the things you might notice when you're cutting is the saw might feel like it's getting stuck. And what's 
happening is the wood is binding and I'll show you what that is. With the saw blade being inside there, if, if the wood is being pressured downwards, what's that doing is it's uh, squishing your, your saw blade as you're trying to cut. Another way you can stop that is have somebody put a tiny bit of weight on the side that you're cutting so that it kind of opens it up. So I'm gonna mark nine. So now that I have all of my pieces cut to make sure everything is the right length, I'm just gonna make sure that everything fits nicely. Double check. Now one more thing to think about is if you notice right here, a notch taken out. This notch here, you would want on the inside corner. You wanna to try to keep this edge as nice as possible. Reason being, that's where the canvas is gonna fold over. And this is called a dry fit. The next thing you're gonna need is your wood glue, as well as your staple gun. Now when you're using this, you wanna keep your safety glasses on because this, the staples do have some force when they come out. So before we start gluing, you wanna put a scrap piece of paper on the bottom or you can use cardboard. Reason being, the glue is gonna leak through and you don't want it to get on your surface. When you put your glue on, you don't have to be too generous, you just need a little bit. I'm gonna put that, place that there. You wanna have this be completely smooth. With your staple gun, most staple guns have something to give you an idea of where the center is. And what you wanna do is get that notch right in between your pieces of wood. I'm gonna start at the front and then work my way back. Do the next one. You notice the staples didn't go completely flush. If that happens, what you're gonna need is a hammer. And then the hammer will help get it completely flush. So the next thing I'm gonna do, really carefully Flip this upside down. You want to be careful because the staples don't have a ton of strength to them. And now that that's being done glued, what I'm going to do is flip it back over and I'm going to take the glue and right in between the two pieces, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit more. I'm going to use my finger to just kind of smooth it out. And make sure you put the cap back on and let this dry for 15, 20 minutes. So after about 15, 20 minutes, your canvas, canvas frame should be dry enough that you can work with it. Make sure your surface area is clean. Your next step, what you're gonna need is a canvas. And you're gonna lay your canvas down. You wanna remember which side was your good side. Now, when I place it down on the canvas, one thing you wanna give it is enough space so that you can stretch the canvas over like this. So that's usually maybe about four inches three, four inches. I'm gonna mark that there. And I'm gonna cut that with some scissors. So with your canvas laid flat, you wanna make sure there's no creases, no folds, everything's nice and flat. But you wanna give this a fold over. It's nice to staple at an angle. Now these are sticking up, so I'm gonna use a hammer again. Next side I'm gonna start with is the complete opposite side, which is right here. And so for the corners, if you're good at gift wrapping, it's the, pretty much the same idea. What I'm gonna do is fold this end over here. I'm gonna take this flap and go over like this. Give that a nice fold. Again, staple at an angle. Make sure your fingers are out of the way. Just like that. To the other side. So again, I'm gonna make sure that that's nice and tucked in there so you get this. Give this a nice staple so it's out of the way. And any other little folds that are kind of poking out like this, you can just staple them down. To continue through, I'm gonna be folding or stretching this, the remainder of the canvas. Now it doesn't have to be super tight because once we put the gesso on or house paint or whatever we're gonna use to seal this, it actually tightens it a little bit more. Now for these extra bits like this, I could have cut them off beforehand, but it's nice to have that little bit extra to have a, a bit more material to pull when you're uh, stretching. Here we have a canvas. You can still see some of the creases like here and it's not very tight. So the next thing we're gonna use, put on some gesso and you also need your brush. So to protect the surface I'm gonna work on, 
I'm actually going to use the same canvas. You could also use cardboard or scrap paper once again. So now that I have my brush, the larger the brush, the better for this case. You don't need a ton on your brush. You only need about an inch. Now for the edges, you want to seal those too. And because this is a wider frame canvas, the edges are going to show a lot. And it's always a good idea to kind of consider them when you're painting your piece. So the last thing we're going to do is once your canvas is dry, you're going to flip it over. You'll need your eye screws, you'll need the pliers, and you'll need the brass, the brass wire. So on the inside of your canvas, you want to mark, I'm going to say four inches. It doesn't really matter the length you make, as long as it's not in the center, because then you'll have some trouble with, with the canvas balancing. And I'll do the same thing to the other side. Take one of these, place it where your pencil mark is. Maybe you can find someone who has a little bit more experience with, with a hammer um, to do this part for you. So you just want to do enough to get it started, kind of like that. You just twist to get it in there. Now it will get start getting a little bit tough. Once it starts getting tough, you can use your pliers to help you out. And then now we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. You wanna get your wire here. You want a piece that is the length of the inside, but also give it an extra two or three inches. Feed it through the eye, and you only need about two or three inches of extra hanging off. You're gonna to wanna to bring this down like that and then give this a twist. Now this end of the wire might be sharp, so be mindful of that. So that one's good. And then here you wanna give it a little bit of a tug. So I'm pulling this this way. I'm also pulling this up just to make it a little bit tight. It doesn't have to be super tight. So this piece I have a little bit longer than the other side, which is fine. I'm gonna twist up that way. And then I'm gonna twist coming back. Now one little trick you can do to make this wire a little bit tighter, you can actually tighten up the uh, eye screw there. Give it two full twists and now I'm gonna give it a little bit of a pull. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully your canvas turned out something like this. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. And that's it for today. Here we go.